Then the mother has about to keep you. Staying in marriage. Being a good example. Being a first daughter. Loving Jesus publicly. Becoming a preacher. So ladies and gentlemen. All the way from Covenant Nations Church. Let's all come, the woman of God.
for his introduction. So I gave my life to God when I was 11 years old. And I was in a I knew that I would follow God and serve God and do whatever he wants except to be a preacher. And I thought that I would always support people who are serving God in that way, like support them in church or do whatever, but not be actually doing it myself. And I grew up and, and I, my, I stayed with the Lord and I grew up and I, I got married and I, I mean I finished school, I got married, I, I mean I worked, I got married, I started, had children. And about, in about 2005, I started having this same vision. Every night I would have this I would have this vision for about a year. And I would see the same thing, and it was a, an, an image of Africa, the continent of Africa. And Africa would, was dark. And I would hear a voice that would say, out of what was called darkness, will come a great light. And then I saw someone blowing a, a trumpet. And then the light started coming out of Uganda. And then I saw someone blowing a trumpet. And as it grew bigger, it expanded and started going out of Uganda into other parts of Africa. And it started going out of Africa, I mean out of Uganda into other parts of Africa until the whole continent was full of light. And then it started going out of Africa to the world. And the Lord said, the light will come from within you. And he said, from within you, meaning you people. And he said, just as a life is changed, from the inside out. He said Africa will be changed from the inside out. And I 
And he said, you are always looking outside of yourself, look, looking to other people to be your light. And you go to other countries and you go to other places and you are looking to others to be your light. But he said, the light is inside you. And as that light shines brighter, it will go out to other nations. So I asked him, I said, Lord, why is the light coming out of Uganda? Is it because I am, I am Ugandan and you're talking to me? He said, no, you are the light of Uganda. And he said, no, Uganda is the heart of Africa. And he said, just as the light comes from the heart, when the heart is transformed, the life is transformed. When Uganda is transformed, Uganda Africa will be transformed. So my last question to, uh, to God was, who is that person blowing the trumpet. And he said, you are the one blowing the trumpet. And I was, of course, I was very surprised and I was, I, I didn't understand what God was talking about. And I tried to ignore that voice for about a year. And in 2006, I was attending a conference somewhere. And the Lord said, you're either going to follow me and follow my path or you're going to follow, go your own path. And so that, that day I made a decision to follow God's path, not knowing where it was going to go. And so as a long story, but to cut a long story short, in 2008, uh, the, the church started in our home. Um, was in our home for three years. I was telling Pastor Wilson that I'm very comfortable in a tent because we were in a tent for a long time. Until we were able to have a, a physical structure that we are in today. And we are God has a purpose for Africa. God has a purpose for you. And as you fulfill your purpose in life, Uganda fulfills its purpose. Uganda na yobwe tebe to kirize chigende de wachayo. And as Uganda fulfills its purpose, Eranga ne Uganda to kirize chigende de wachayo. Africa fulfills its purpose. Ne Africa bwe tebe to kirize chigende de wachayo. And as Africa fulfills its purpose, Africa bwe to kirize chigende de wachidiko. It becomes a light to the world. E fuke chitanga de lien siyona. Now many people don't think that there is any light in Africa. And many people think there is no light in Uganda. And many people think there is no light in you or in me. But what I want to, sh to share with you today is that when you discover the light that is inside of you, and you allow that light to shine. No kidize chitanga le chikulimu okwaka. It will affect your family, it will affect your community. Chidja koma kumakage wa mwe, chikomene kuchaloche wa mwe. It will affect your city. Chikome kuchibuga. It will affect your nation. Chikome kugwanga mori. 
and, and your continent and, and the world. So it starts, it starts with you. And it starts with me. Are we together so far? Okay. So the theme for for this conference, for this meeting, is from the book of Acts, chapter 16. Acts, chapter 16, verse 25. And I don't know if we've been reading it. Or we need to read it. But the story here is of Paul and Silas. And Paul and Silas are uh, imprisoned. Not because of anything they've done, but just because of doing what I'm doing today. And doing what Pastor Wilson and Pastor Michael and others are doing. And what you are doing, you, in this time, you could be put in prison for doing that. So they were beaten, they were, um, their clothes were torn. They were in pain, they were alone in a dark, dark prison. They had chains on their feet. And it was night, it was, it was midnight. But in that time, in that very, very dark time, they were singing. They were singing praises to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. So suddenly, someone say suddenly. Suddenly, in, in that very dark, dark, dark situation, God moves. God moves in the midst of the, the darkness. And there's an earthquake. And the foundations of the prison are shaken. The foundations are shaken and the prison doors open. And the, 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 the warden, the prison warden who was you know, guarding them. When he sees the doors open, he thinks that they have been, they have escaped, but they are still there. So, the, Paul, they preach the gospel to him. He <laughs> receives Christ, him and his whole household, and they are baptized that night. Amen. So that God moved and the doors were opened. No, nobody opened the doors for them. God opened the doors for them. But they were still in prison. So the next morning the judge or the, the authority now says you can be released. Now Paul, for his own reason, says, he says, you, you imprisoned us unjustly, and now you want us to go quietly. Unless you come and, and you know, release us, we are not going to go. And that happens and they are released. But as I was reading this, just trying to see what the Lord was saying, uh, what, what, what he was saying through this message today. 
I saw a number of things. First is that there was a spiritual move or there was a spiritual breakthrough. Before the natural breakthrough. The spiritual breakthrough preceded the natural breakthrough. And the spiritual breakthrough happened because they were praising God in the midst of a dark situation. So there was a spiritual move and then after that even the natural moved. So God had opened first he had opened the doors through a move of God. And then he influenced the authorities to release them. But there was one last thing that, that I saw. Paul and Silas had to get up and walk out. Even if God had shaken the prison and opened the doors, and the magistrates had said, You are released. Paul and Silas had a choice whether they were going to stay in prison or or get out. Africa and I'm just going to begin with that and then I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to Africa was our history is very much like those prisoners. We have been bound by many things as pastor was talking about witchcraft and idolatry there were wars we've had wars we've had diseases we've had epidemics we've had bloodshed we've had so many different issues and during in the midst of that darkest of our seasons. People turn to God. People turn to God in deep, deep seeking and searching for answers and for solutions and for help. My grandmother was an intercessor. My grandmothers on, on both sides. And they would pray so deeply. In the years when we had war in Uganda, they would pray so they would intercede. And they would intercede that there would be peace in Uganda. Again. And many, many other people, many other intercessors in this nation and, and, and beyond. And the there have been great spiritual moves in Uganda and even around Africa. Do you know that if you go to another country, you will not find this number of believers meeting together on a Wednesday night? I don't want you to take this for granted and think that this is a normal thing. This is a move of God. And God has been moving all over Uganda and all over Africa for, for a number of years now. Africa has the fastest growing church. The, the believers, the, 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 the growth of the church in Africa is is exponential. It's the highest growth in the world. In other countries, churches are being turned into bars, into nightclubs. But in Africa, we don't have enough space for 
We don't have enough churches for people. People are worshiping under tents. That is a move of God. We are experiencing revival. I, a number, just a few weeks ago, I was in uh, Nigeria. In Nigeria, there was a, a huge, huge crusade, not crusade, like a co congress. They called it a congress. And in that meeting where we, where, which I attended, there were about uh, over five million people in just one meeting. And the, the space was kilometers long. The, the, the structure was kilometers, like five kilometers by five kilometers. And the place was full and there was overflow in another place which was seating three million people. So altogether there were about eight million people in that meeting. Now do you think that that is a normal thing? That is a move of God. And the spiritual move always goes before the, the, natural, the natural move. And as 